untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today my supporters on Patreon voted on a Grixis Pirate Tribal deck featuring Admiral Beckett Brass as our commander, a 4-mana 3-3 giving other pirates we control plus 1 plus 1, and at the beginning of our end step, gain control of target non-land permanent controlled by a player who was dealt combat damage by 3 or more pirates this turn. So we definitely built a deck with Admiral's ability in mind, so we're going to be playing as many pirates as possible, especially evasive ones, which make it easier to attack the opponent without losing them, and then and get to steal the opponent's stuff. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, first starting with our creatures, where at one mana we've got Siren Storm Tamer, a nice evasive creature that can also be sacrificed to protect one of our key cards, like maybe our Admiral Backed Brass. We've got Spectral Sailor, another flying creature that can also draw cards in the late game. Daring Buccaneer, one mana 2-2, two -two, as long as we can reveal a pirate, which should not be an issue. Fanatical Firebrand can also be sacrificed to deal 1 damage to any target, so it gives us a bit of removal. Then at 2 mana, Daring Saboteur can also become unblockable, and then the part of Deckhand can only be blocked by spirits and can also make other pirates unblockable potentially. Skyship Plunder, an addition from Kaladesh, 2-1 Flyer, that can potentially add more plus 1 plus 1 counters to our creatures. Stormfleet Aerialist, a 1 mana 2-3 Flyer if we can enable Raid. Warkite Marauder, 2-1, that can shrink something into an 0-1 when it attacks. Then we've got Darfleet Poisoner, which can kind of act as a combo trick, giving one of our attacking pirates plus one plus one and death touch until end of turn. Fathom Fleet Captain can also start generating more menacing pirate tokens. Kitesail Freebooter gives us a bit of hand disruption, taking away a non-creature non-land card from the opponent's hand until the Freebooter leaves the battlefield. Darfleet Daredevil can potentially get back an instant or sorcery from the opponent's graveyard, and is a 2-1 first strike. Karyusev, another addition from Kaladesh, 1-3 with First Strike and Menace, that makes an attacking Ragavan token. And then we've got Darfleet Captain, that gets bigger with each attacking pirate we have. And Metallic Mimic, another addition from Kaladesh, a 2-1 that names Pirate when it enters a battlefield, and then all future pirates will get a plus one plus one counter. Corsair Captain, a nice one from Jumpstart, giving our pirates plus one plus one, and when it enters a battlefield also makes a treasure token which we can sacrifice for mana. Forerunner of the Coalition can search up any pirate and put it on top of our deck, and also starts draining the opponent whenever we play a pirate. Ruin Raider can draw extra cards, thanks to Raid. Captain Lannery Storm makes a whole bunch of treasure tokens, and also gets bigger whenever we sacrifice one of those treasures. Stormfleet Sprinter, 2-2 with haste and unblockable. And then topping off our curve, a Dream Caller Siren can tap two creatures down when it enters a battlefield, as long as we control a pirate, and another evasive creature to make it easier to hit with three of them. We've got Captivating Crew, which can steal the opponent's creatures for a turn with the activated ability. Hostage Taker, a nice removal spell that can steal creatures or artifacts and then let us replay them so the opponent can get them back. And Darfleet Neckbreaker, also a nice anthem effect, giving attacking pirates plus 2 plus 0. And then taking a look at some of the non-creature spells in the deck. March of the Drowned, for one mana, gets two pirates back into our hand. So that's a nice one to get a bit of card advantage late game. Buccaneer's Bravado, a nice combo trick, giving a pirate plus one plus one and double strike for just two mana. Of course, we still have Arcane Signet to help us ramp. And then at three mana, Lookout's Dispersal, which is only actually two mana as long as we control a pirate to counter target spell unless its controller pays four. Fiery Cannonade gives us a sweeper, dealing two damage to each non-pirate creature at instant speed. Fell Flagship gives our pirates plus one plus so and can also potentially turn into a creature that makes the opponent discard a card whenever it deals combat damage to them. And then Herald Sword, another jumpstart addition, making our pirates one cheaper. And at the beginning of our upkeep, we can reveal the top card, and if it's a pirate, we can put it into our hands, so it provides a nice bit of card advantage. And Icon Vance's Tree, another nice tribal card, giving our pirates plus one plus one. And then for three mana, we can tap and activate it to look at the top three cards of our library to find a pirate and put it into our hand. And then topping off our curve, we've got Angrath, the Flame Chained, as the pirate planeswalker that can steal opposing creatures or make the opponent discard. And Vanquisher's Banner, once again giving our pirates plus one plus one, and whenever we cast a pirate spell we'll get to draw a card, so it can provide a lot of card advantage as well. And then taking a look at our mana base, we've got some basics here, three islands, three swamps and four mountains, and then a whole host of dual lands, I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but deck list as always is in the video description. Command Tower, Evolving Wilds, Fabled Passage, Expanse, and Unclaimed Territory, nice mana fixing for the deck as well. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Chulain Teller of Tales deck, so we can expect some ramp and plenty of creatures. This hand's 
not that exciting. We're lacking the early creatures. Cannonade could be okay for point has a lot of mana creatures. And dispersal could of course be useful as well, but I think we should look for more creatures. And this is better. Probably kick things off with a freebooter, just to have a look. Turn to Charming Prince. It's gonna scry too, presumably. And then turn to Freebooter into maybe Rune Raider to start drawing cards could be good. Alright, Intervention, the only card we can take. Apparition. At least they can't cast since they don't have double white. Dream Trawler, definitely going to be an issue later in the game. So opponent's probably looking for some ramp cards. They did find a second plane, so they could play Apparition. Alright, so now the plan of Runerator isn't as appealing. So instead I could go Signet into Saboteur. Kinnon doesn't do a whole lot at the moment. I'll take two. Ooh, Vanquisher's Banner, that's a nice one. Let's just play that and pass. Opponent found Signet, so yeah, now they're pretty close to casting the Dream Trawler. Attacks with all. I think I trade with Kinnon, because otherwise Signet would make two mana next turn. And then if they want Intervention here, that's okay. All right, so decisions, decisions. I don't have a way to enable raids for my two creatures, but just playing them might still be fine since we'll get to draw cards off of them. Yeah, so we'll go, I guess, Aerialist first. And then just play Evolving Wilds. So the flagship can give our parents plus one plus so, this is plus one plus one. So we're getting close to having a creature that can maybe trade for Dream Trawler. And Icon is gonna get the job done, I think. Although we can't play everything this turn. So Admiral first, so we get to draw a card. And a Forerunner. Forerunner could find any pirates. Not sure which one. But it seems like a good deal. So what's the pick? Hostage taker is always a solid option. Yeah, I don't mind hostage taker here. Could also go with Corsair Captain as another anthem effect. And just try and go bigger than the opponents. Yeah, maybe that's the play, because if I hostage taker Sure, I can like target Dream Trawler, make him discard a card. Um, I could, I guess, steal the Apparition and then play Apparition to get rid of something else. That's not bad. All right, maybe, maybe Hostage Taker still better here. And then probably no attack. Is 
take five. Bowden passes with three cards in hand. They could have played Chulane, but who knows? I guess they might have like a Frilled Mystic in hand, which also combos with Chulane. But all my cards are pretty important to resolve. So, yeah, I guess we'll play Hostage Taker. We'll get to draw a card from the banner. And we'll take it from there. Take Apparition. I guess I just activate Kinon here instead. And then Apparition their Signets. Take away their mana production. What does Kinon hit? Yashar. They don't have any planes left in the deck. So now do I want to attack? Um, I would enable raid. I guess Forerunner could attack. And I'm fine trading it for Yashar. And then we'll just play a Steam Vents. And that's a pretty pricey reveal with Rune Raider. Although we can use a Siren to tap down Dream Trawler for a turn two. And then afterwards it can just trade for the Dream Trawler. So we'll have to take five. How much mana are we working with? Six, seven, eight, nine. So not enough to play Flagship, Ancestry and Siren. But we might not need both. Plus if I use Siren I can maybe get an attack in with Back at Brass to steal an opposing card as well. They have to be pirates, so Apparition and the token don't count. So if I tap down two creatures, I've still five attacking pirates. I guess that still works out. So yeah, let's start there. And Lookout's Dispersal seems nice to have. So we'll tap down Yasharn, and I guess Chulain's fine. Can still play Flagship or Icon. What's better here? I guess Icon pumps toughness as well. So they can't trade for Admiral. Name Pirate. Now we are at three, so we have to be a little careful. And I guess I could die to my own Ruined Raider. So if my opponent just takes all the damage, I might have to steal one of their untapped creatures with uh, Admiral's ability, so I have enough blockers so I don't die. Her opponent's at 11. Those trigger. And then... Yeah, as much as I want to steal Chulane, I only have three blockers at the moment. I might take more damage off Ruin Raider. I think stealing Kinon's the safest play. And then hopefully we don't die to our own Ruin Raider trigger. 
All right, land is good. All right, so we get to pass a turn. Can block Green Trawler with our Siren, and we've got a Dispersal in hand as a counterspell, so hopefully that's enough. And Giant Killer, I guess we can counter, but they can pay for it. They have just enough mana. And I can't do anything about it. Kinon makes the extra mana for Arcane Signet, but yeah. Opponent has just enough here. So close game. Ended up taking a little bit too much damage off our own Rune Raider. Ooh, opponent let the counter spell resolve. I guess because they have a questing beast which can kill us instead. Attacks with all. Can block Dream Trawler. But sadly, all my creatures are too small to block Questing Beast. GG's. Well, at least we got to trigger our commander here. So, I would say mission accomplished. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing a Gishoth, a Sun's Avatar, Dinosaur Ramp deck, and my hand's pretty decent. I'll have to fetch up a Mountain turn one. Turn two, not sure yet if I'm playing Marauder or Captain. If I play Captain this turn, next turn I can Firebrand plus Marauder. Um... Yeah, that seems okay. Huntmaster sadly doesn't die to the one damage. So... Yeah, we're just gonna... Have to... I suppose I could also Firebrand and keep a Bravado in case they block. But then I wouldn't be able to play Marauder since I don't have double red. If I play a... Uh, pathway. Could also play Flagship. I guess Flagship's a decent option too. Although getting the two creatures in place sets up Admiral a bit better. Because then the Marauder can also shrink something down. So if the opponent's play next turn is play 4 mana Dinosaur, I can shrink it down and force them to either Chum Block or have me steal something, so that seems pretty good. Blast Zone can blow up Firebrand eventually, but not right now. Rhythm, all right. That seems fine. And my opponent concedes. Yeah, I mean, they're gonna have to chump, lose their Huntmaster, or I can just steal it, or maybe steal their Rhythm. So if they don't have a Sweeper, which I doubt they have in a Dinosaur Ramp deck, they're gonna be in a lot of trouble. So yeah, that's the power of Admiral Beckett Brass on the play sometimes. You just curve out, and the opponent, if they don't have a removal spell handy, is just gonna get run over. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing a Tessa Karlov deck. This hand's a little clunky with two fetch lands, and my creatures don't particularly interact favorably against a black-white sacrifice deck. This is better. And then I probably want to fetch Island or Swamp. And turn to Fathom Fleet Captain. And then, if we have a opportunity to attack, we can play Rune Raider to enable raid. If not, maybe play Flagship. I'll take the one. Move to combat. And wave the pirate flag. 
All right, next turn we could already play our commander, also we'll maybe take it slow. Skyclave Relic for a bit of ramp. All right, so going Mimic plus Aerialist is tempting. Now I'm not sure how many sweepers my opponent has in their deck, in which case just playing Flagship is a little bit safer and plays around a sweeper effect better. So yeah, probably gonna do that instead. Flagship, attack, and then play a tapped Watery Grave. I could play my land untapped on the off chance that I reveal a Spectral Sailor here, which is the only one mana flash card I think I care about. So we'll see whether or not there's a board wipe. Token attacks. That's kind of an indication. Yep. Alright, at least we get to hit them with a flagship and that way uh, make them discard a card. So I guess Mimic into Firebrand, name Pirate. This gets a counter. Crew this, attack, and then we'll have Raid for Aerialist. Opponent has to discard. And then next turn, our commander might be a nice play. So yeah, having some of these artifacts like Fell Flagship and our various Anthem effects like Vanquisher's Banner and uh, Herald's Horn are nice ways to potentially still beat Wrath effects, which are otherwise very effective against us. Cleansing Nova, destroying all creatures once again. Yep, yeah, that's too bad. Also a Forerunner of the Coalition. The draw. So that can maybe get a Hostage Taker. So I can play both Forerunner and Admiral. So do I just play Admiral? I think I do still play Forerunner. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of options. Hostage Taker is always a safe bet. Could get a Freebooter for a bit of hand disruption in case they have more sweepers. Could get an unblockable threat like Sprinter. We'll go with Hostage Taker. And then we get to crew and hit for three. Opponent's down to two cards in hand. Haven't been paying too much attention to what they're discarding here. Open the graves and land. So our opponent's got six mana. Opponent passes without doing anything. Could play Hostage Taker to steal a Relic and play it. Not sure what to expect here. I don't really care about stealing the Relic, but maybe it's still better than playing Admiral here. Nah, I'll play Admiral. If their plan is to make a token and chump, that's fine by me. All right, standard bearer is going to trade for the flagship. Phone falls to five. And one card in hand. And they know about hostage takers, so if their plan is just to play creature, it's not going to work. So I guess our best bet might be activating Castle Ardenvale to make a token at instant speed, which we can steal with Hostage Taker in our main phase, and that would keep them alive. Although, 
It's not a great life. Goes for Taysa instead. And yeah, just gonna hostage take Taysa attack and my opponent's dead. So yeah, nice example of how to potentially play around sweeper effects when you are given some of the artifacts. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Depala Pilot Exemplar Vehicle Dwarf deck. So it should be fun. Hand is okay. Turn one. Probably just gonna run out Storm Tamer off my unclaimed territory. And then Metallic Mimic is tempting. Next turn, maybe go Freebooter plus Expanse, get an island so Sulphur Falls is untapped. And we're starting to build up a nice army of evasive creatures to enable Admiral. Aha, uh -huh, Seven Dwarves, of course, makes sense. Sky Sovereign. Ooh, Glorybringer's gonna be scary. So I don't necessarily want to trade Mimic for Dwarves if they don't have any additional copies in hand. Even if they had one, I probably wouldn't care enough. The Pala. Pumps the Dwarves. Take it. Could play Beckett and then kind of force a trade for Depala in a way. Or we could double two drop and then next turn play Beckett. That seems better to me. And then we'll even have Storm Tamer to protect our commander. Ram's expertise. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Make three servos and play responder. So now we'll have a more difficult time getting back it to have uh, three creatures connect. Take three. Yeah, Buccaneer, sadly, is gonna cost more than one mana. We might be on the Saboteur plane here, in which case I don't want to trade it off. Mechanic. That's fine. So opponent just plays a couple dwarves. Can double block responder. Ooh, dispersal was a great draw. So now we can counter glory bringer. Get in for four. Probably discarding buccaneer at this point. Um. Yeah. I don't think I'm playing the land since we might discard it with Saboteur next turn. Even though playing land means I could Dispersal and activate Storm Tamer, but I don't expect to need both on the following turn. Just want to counter Glorybringer. Alright. The board is kind of stalled, but we have an evasive creature, and they don't. And Deckhand was a great draw too. Now, I guess I should play Deckhand and keep up Storm Tamer just to be safe. And then next turn... 
I can, let's see, activate deckhand if I draw lands, activate saboteur, and then if I make captain unblockable, opponent doesn't have any spirits, then they would be dead, so they might have to attack with responder. Shield mare, I guess, gains a bit of life. 12, yeah, only a 14 damage, but now I can is potentially great draw too. Yeah, playing Icon. And then activating Saboteur seems good enough, and my opponent packs it in. Sweet. So yeah, the unblockable creatures here getting the job done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Muldrotha, the Gravetide deck. What do we think of this opening hand? Uh, Freebooter. Freebooter could be okay, although, yeah, it's pretty action light. Daredevil might not have something to get back right away. I think I should take a mulligan. Alright, this is a bit better. Now, my curve's gonna be a little awkward. But I think I should still start with fetching a mountain. Turn two buccaneer, turn three captain. So we'll be a turn behind. Alright, Command Tower means I can now play Captain on 2. Now Muldrotha deck is not going to have a ton of instants and sorceries, I guess is the drawback. Cycles a late claim. Sprinter's not bad. Or we could go Buccaneer Daredevil to set up Admiral, stealing something from the opponent next turn. Maybe that's more fun. Just a Chromatic Lantern, which we can take away. Let's hope they don't have a sweeper. Chupacabra. Alright, that will stem the bleeding. Although an extra land will still let me replay Admiral. Corsair. Captain, pretty good too. So if I attack with all bravado, could be great, or I can just sprint her. Uh, let's see, this would go up to 5. Yeah, they probably would chumblock block if I provide a Buccaneer. We're hitting for 11, which is not quite lethal. So yeah, I think we just Sprinter. And then they still have to chump Captain anyway. I guess there is an argument for still going for Bravado, so that if they do have a Sweeper, we can follow up with a Sprinter to maybe close out the game. But yeah, Eldest Reborn's not gonna cut it. Alright, GG's. So another nice aggressive start, and Admiral being able to use its ability to good effect. So yeah, overall, this Grixis Pirate Tribal deck, not a bad choice if you're looking for some tribal fun in Historic Brawl. Not gonna beat the most competitive Brawl decks out there, so don't expect that. But if you're looking for a fun time and maybe trying to steal some of the opponent's permanents, then this might be the deck for you. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.